Hello from a somewhat damp area of the northwest of England. I hope you're all well and happy Imog. I thought it might be an idea to explore some connected practices and celebrations that are also relevant to this time of year and equally associated to the concepts we link to in the Imog festivals. So what springs to mind when we think of this period? Well, this is a time to prepare for new growth. It's about laying the foundations for those seeds we plant to have the best chance of germination, subsequent growth and leading to an abundant harvest. All this with the hope that this harvest will see us through those darker periods once again until we arrive once more to prepare the land and repeat that cycle. We could of course see this period and many of us do as a time to consider our plans for the year, sowing the seeds of ideas for that new book or poem we're going to write perhaps starting a new project or learning a new skill, or thinking about nurturing more widely when it comes to families, friends and loved ones. However, we might take a more literal horticultural or agricultural view on this period. And if you or your family have an area for growing vegetables in your garden or allotment perhaps, then now is the time to start to think about what fun you're gonna have as you choose those plants and vegetables to nurture through the growing periods to come or perhaps you don't have access to a larger space and you're thinking about growing smaller vegetables or seeds and sprouts in a smaller area, perhaps even a window box. Whatever space you've got, then I hope you enjoy the decisions and anticipation as you prepare to nurture that green life into the world. Now, going back in time, those that have come before us made those same decisions, but they had no fallback of a supermarket to purchase their products. If the soil was too dry or a blight affected the crop. So for them, these decisions could literally be life or death, and so many were reliant on the expertise of those that toiled on the fields. And during this time of year is when those field workers would have done everything they could to ensure their seeds grew to a bountiful harvest. This meant that the fields had to be prepared well to accept the seeds, and the tools sharpened and conditioned to allow them to do that. Now, one piece of equipment used to prepare the land for sowing of the seeds is the plough, which loosens and turns the soil, so it's ready to accept those seeds. Usually today you'll see these attached to the back of tractors, churning huge amounts of soil as they drive across the fields. But ancient people, wherever they were in the world, had to do this same job by hand, or at best with the help of animals, to pull the plough, typically oxen or horses. I mean, think of even a small farming field that you've seen. How long would it have taken you to pick and turn the soil with a hand plough? A long time, I can assure you. But even with the help of horses or oxen, it can take a lot of time. So, with all that effort being put into preparing the soil, you clearly want to ensure that the effort would be fruitful and that the harvest would indeed be abundant. So enters some help in the guise of a little folk magic. Charming the plough is one such method of blessing both the ground that we will be planting our seeds into and the tools we use to prepare that ground. There are plough blessing rituals that have been accounted for in historic writing from ancient Greece through to the highlands of Scotland and all over the globe. These rituals originally had a pagan origin, whether that was a connection to Greek or Roman pantheon, Celtic, African or any other pantheon of gods and goddesses. Even up until the late 17th century in Scotland, those working in the fields repeated rhymes to the fair folk to bless the ploughs and furrows they created in the field as they worked, often giving a gift of food and drink back to the land in exchange. From the northeast of Scotland in Aberdeenshire, we have multiple records of various plough blessings, with a common thread of setting a day aside before the actual ploughing begun to bless the plough. This usually took the form of a drink, often whiskey, poured over the bridle of the plough, then attaching some bread and cheese to the wooden beam of the plough before ploughing just one furrow and then stopping work. This would be done perhaps at the weekend, ready for the ploughing to start fully on the Monday. Similar types of plough blessings and offerings were made in ancient Greece, where Ceres, the protector of agriculture, who gives us the root of the word cereal today, would have been the recipient goddess in that case, and her blessings in the field requested in exchange for food and drinks, or oblations. Here in England, we have a long tradition of charming the plough, and this continues in rural communities today, 
and during January many parish clergy members will have blessed many a farmer's plough, with some farmers even taking their tractors to the church on Sunday for the ceremony. However, this practice goes much farther back and one of the earlier ceremonies is recorded in the Anglo-Saxon Ackerbot, which translates from the Old English to field charm or field remedy. The ritual described has many Christianized elements, but scholars agree that it likely dates way back before Christianity. So, first, four sods or chunks of earth with grass on top would be taken from the field at night, being sure to mark the spots that they came from. Then, the next day, oil, honey and milk from every kind of livestock would be gathered. Then, a piece of every tree, but not hardwood. Then a piece of every plant that has a name except burdock. Holy water would be mixed with this and it would be poured over the sods of earth, saying, grow and multiply and fill the earth, before being taken to the church where the priest would sing four masses over them. After this, the sods were taken back to the place that they came from before the sun sets and in each hole a carved cross would be buried as they were placed back. But that's not all. Then you would have to take a seed from a beggar, but give back twice the amount that you took from them. Then bore a hole in the beam of your plough, fill it with incense, fennel, a blessed salve and some blessed salt. Finally, you place the seed on the body of the plough and say the famous words. Erke, 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 mother of the earth, may the almighty grant you, the eternal Lord, fields growing and flourishing, increasing and strengthening, high shafts, bright fruits and abundant barley growth, and the white wheat growth, and all growth of the earth. May the eternal grant him and his holy ones, who are in heaven, that his produce be defended against all enemies, and that it be protected against all evils, against poisonous sorcery sown over the land. Now I ask that the ruler that shaped the world, that there may be no speaking woman or skillful man who can turn to naught words thus spoken. Then the plough is pushed to open the first furrow, saying, May you be well, earth, mother of humankind. May you grow in God's embrace, filled with food for our use. That's about as magical as ritual can possibly get. I'm sure you'll agree. And it's easy to see how this has its roots in far earlier versions of rituals and blessings that we've mentioned. Now, it does seem somewhat time consuming, though when life depends on it, I guess you're willing to put the effort in. So, that's a little bit about charming or blessing the plough and the famous Akabot ritual. But how are you preparing the foundations for the year? What seeds of ideas are you getting ready to sow? Whatever your ideas or plans may be, on behalf of the Pagan Federation and the Children and Families team, I wish you and your families an abundant harvest.